Hello and welcome to my next tutorial about Prepomex. This time I will show you how to analyze a Hertz contact problem. Let's create a new model first. Uh, I will choose the unit system of millimeters and now I have to import the geometry. I will use the step file format. And the geometry is already imported, uh, so we can see that this will be a sphere or actually a hemisphere in contact with a plate. Uh, but you can notice uh, f f two things. First of all, uh, there are, uh, there's a, that's a quarter of the whole model because we lose symmetry. Uh, and second thing is that you can notice that there are 10 parts instead of two. And that's because of the way it was uh, modeled in, in uh, FreeCAD. Uh, because uh, apart from modeling those two parts, uh, I had to divide them into smaller regions uh, so that I can apply a mesh refinement uh, here and uh, here. Mm, but unfortunately in FreeCAD, if, if we partition the parts, uh, we'll end up with a model consisting of uh, more parts than you would expect. However, it's not a big deal because in Prepomex there's a tool that will help us merge those parts uh, into uh, compound parts. So let's start by selecting those two regions here and I will choose the geometry, create compound part uh, and continue. And this will create a compound part from, this, uh, from those two regions. And now let's do the same for the plate. Um, I will use box selection uh, to select uh, all those parts uh, and I will again use the uh, create compound part tool. Uh, I will play continue and uh, now we have two compound uh, parts. And now uh, let's create a mesh. I will specify meshing parameters for those two compound parts. They will have the, the same uh, meshing parameters. Mm, and uh, this will be uh, 4 millimeters for global element size. You can preview this. Uh, however, in this case, we will use uh, something new, a function that we haven't used in previous tutorials, mesh refinements. Uh, we'll apply them uh, to those two regions here so that the, the mesh is uh, refined in the area, uh, around the area of contact. Let's choose this, uh, let's switch to, to part, uh, choose this region first. Mm, this will be the, the whole volume here. Mm, and I'll specify mesh size of 0 0.8 millimeters. And now I will do the same for uh, the uh, bottom part. Uh, I'll also specify uh, the same uh, mesh size. I can confirm this and you can see that the mesh will be refined in this area. Uh, let's create a mesh and you will see uh, that for those two parts uh, there will be varying mesh density. The mesh is already generated. You can see how it changes density uh, around those two regions. And now let's define the analysis features. I will start, start by defining material. And uh, this will be steel. Uh, I could define uh, two materials, one for this uh, sphere and one for the plate. Uh, but uh, to simplify the, the analytical solution, I will use a single material for both parts. Uh, this will be steel as always, and I will use the same uh, material and properties. I can confirm this, uh, create a new section, and I will apply the section to those uh, all, all those parts. I can confirm this, mm, and now uh, what we have to do is create a step, but before let's create a contact, that's also something new uh, that we haven't done uh, before. Let's start by creating a surface interaction. Uh, we have What we have here is surface behavior uh, in the normal direction, friction, but we will ignore this, uh, and gap conductance, which is for thermal analysis. So I will only specify surface behavior uh, and use the default uh, hard contact. I can confirm this and now I have to create a contact pair. Uh, the surface interaction that, that we chose before is already selected here. Uh, and I will have to uh, pick master face and uh, slave face. Uh, for master I'll choose uh, this one here and for slave I'll choose this one here. There are several rules uh, that tell you which surface should be master and sh which surface should be slave. I won't discuss them here, but I'll only tell you that it depends on the, uh, dens on the density of mesh, on the rigidity of the parts, uh, but also on their size and, and which one is concave, which is convex, uh, which is flat and so on. Uh, in this case, the proper selection is, is uh, right here, but mm, this model is not so complex, so uh, it shouldn't matter that much. Let's confirm this. And now I can create a step. You can, you can see that the contact pair was created, so I'll only have to create a step. Uh, this will be static step with default settings. And now I have to define boundary conditions. Mm, let's start uh, by applying uh, boundary conditions uh, to this region. And this will be symmetry in x direction. Uh, I won't name the boundary conditions because there will be only a few of them and it shouldn't be confusing when I don't, don't specify any names. Let's uh, confirm. Uh, and now uh, I will create another uh, boundary condition of the same type, apply to those faces here. And this will be in y direction. Uh, let's create another one. And this will be again displacement rotation type, uh, applied to the bottom of the plate. Uh, and this time it will be fixed in all directions uh, like that. 
Let's confirm this and finally I will apply one more uh, displacement rotation boundary condition applied to this top phase of the uh, hemisphere and this will be uh, translation prescribed displacement in Z direction and the value is uh, 0 0.2 millimeters uh, towards the, the plate of course. I can confirm this and now everything is uh, defined properly uh, I will enable mesh view again and now I can submit the analysis um, it might take a while and that's a nonlinear analysis with contact it took some time uh, but the results are already available so let's check them uh, in this case we are interested in the stresses uh, we'll compare them with analytical solution so let's check the phonomesis stress uh, as well as this normal stress in uh, z direction uh, and uh, this is the analytical solution and uh, the formula here uh, is the one i derived from uh, Rourke's formulas for stress and strain uh, and you can see that the maximum stress uh, should uh, have the, the value uh, specified right here and uh, let's uh, check uh, what are the uh, stresses uh, in the model you can use the query tool uh, to uh, check uh, the stresses in a few points uh, around the uh, area of contact maybe not necessarily in this particular point uh, but uh, slightly uh, further away nodes located uh, above and below that point and compare this with uh, analytical solution uh, you can see that even though the mesh that we used is not uh, very dense uh, it could be uh, definitely it could be denser uh, but you can still see that the results are still very good uh, in contact analysis mesh density is very important uh, and uh, for this type of analysis uh, we got really uh, close to the analytical solution uh, so uh, of course if you wanted to mm, have even more accurate results we would have to uh, further refine the mesh around this region of contact but this uh, level of accuracy uh, should be uh, sufficient uh, uh, that's it for this uh, pre pomex tutorial uh, thank you very much for your attention as always feel free to ask any questions and suggest topics for future tutorials in the comments have a nice day and see you in the next video